this is what I long for. This is what I've wanted in marriage for years and years and years and years. Now, will I ever be married again? No. Good morning, it is 6 a.m. on day two. This is Thursday down here in Los Angeles, California. I slept well, I woke up and showered well, I had an old glory well, because, you know, I had to bring those with me. I am ready for day two at the Truth Matters Conference. First and foremost, I'm headed to the Getty Center because I don't think there's gonna be a way for me to get there tonight. I don't think I'm gonna have enough time. I'm not gonna sure if I'm gonna have enough time. I'm gonna head to the Getty Sitter right now just to try to catch a glimpse of some sunrise. I'm not sure if I'm gonna, well, I mean, the sun rises at seven. It's exactly six right now. It's all 405 freeway to get there. It's just obviously, you know, early morning on the 405. So it says it's 28 minutes away that I'll be there in 28 minutes. So that's okay, 626 arrival. Well, we shall see, hope so. I mean, it's pretty accurate, so we'll see. Anyway, I'm gonna head that way and uh, we're gonna try and get some sunrise action. Well, that was a bummer. <laughs> so I drove down here and don't trust maps apps when it says it's a 20 minute drive because that 20 minutes was about 55 minutes. So that's LA traffic for you. Anyway, it is morning rush hour. I get down here to the Getty Center and it was closed, which I knew it was closed and that's okay. The person I was talking to the other day said, oh yeah, you can still get to the parking lot to be able to see the sunrise. I'm like, okay, that's cool. So I drove down here to get to the Getty Center and do the sunrise. Well, I get here and sure enough, security stops me and says, oh yeah, you can't, a little, light, a little Mexican lady, oh, you can't come in because the, the, the museum is closed. I was like, well, I know that, but I was just wanting to get to the parking lot to watch the sunrise. Yeah, they, even the parking lot you can't get to because it's closed. Oh, okay. So no big deal. I will try to come back down tonight when I meet up with James and, um, See if I can't get a sun sun setting. We'll see. Anyway, I'm uh, now getting jumped uh, right back on the 405 freeway and en route to Grace Community Church. We'll talk to you soon. Oh. No go here. No, no. No, no. I just want to see the sunrise no he's closed i know i'm aware that it's closed but i just want to get to the parking lot no the parking lot is closed everything's closed you no go here you no see sunrise here you go no see the sunrise here at the light turn left onto Pantara street uh, okay that was an absolute delight so the parking that i parked in yesterday is not available yet this morning whatever i'm out here in this little wash area Anyway, I'm gonna walk up to the gas station and see if I can find another energy drink. They have all the coffee and donuts in the world provided here for free. I'm not a coffee drinker, but there is a gas station nearby. So I'm gonna be this guy that's now going to walk the street after I meet up with some people. I'm here at Grace Community Church in Panorama City or Sun Valley or something Los Angeles. Okay, so I met up with my people and I left at the uh, I left my stuff with them, so now I'm headed to the gas station, and I think there's one up this road. I hope so. So I figured the odds were stacked against me trying to find an old glory at a 7-Eleven in East LA, but of course I did not. But I did find a Rockstar. These are what I used to drink prior to switching to Old Glory in June 2007. Oh, I guess I could go. I'm not paying attention. It's really loud here. This particular Rockstar is what I used to drink, so it ain't that bad, but for three bucks, I'm not very excited about that. Anyway, walking back to the church, what is this? So I have not had much time to talk about it, but at the end of the conference last night, at the very end, Bodie Bauckham got there, got up there and obviously, you know, preached for an hour. Uh, John MacArthur was in there for the very last one for that particular session and then it ended we all got dismissed blah 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 me and the lady that I'm with 
ran up there to John MacArthur because I knew he'd get swamped or they would rush him out of there. Well, I was able to get to him before he left and before all the people swamped him, met him, talked to him, thanked him, shook his hand, and he signed my brand new John MacArthur study Bible that I bought yesterday. This is one, now, I know you, I know what you're saying, I know what you're saying, I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, he's got like 15 John MacArthur study Bibles. Why did he get another one? This one particular study Bible is a top premium leather, pastor's edition, goat skin, cowhide, something Bible. It's top of the line leather. You know how you can judge a Bible is how it folds over your hands when you're holding it, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, if you open the Bible to, let's say, Jeremiah, which is almost the middle, I believe actually it is the middle, um, you open it to Jeremiah and you just let the pages and the, and, the, and the covers fall backwards, fall downwards, and it still holds perfectly in the palm of your hand, and yet it's like a fountain. The covers go side to side. That's what this Bible does. This is a $300 Bible that they had on sale here at the conference. I was able to snag it up. My goal is to have, obviously, John MacArthur sign it. He, was, he did. Phil Johnson has signed it. And I was able to meet and talk with Todd Friel for about five minutes. Now, I will admit, I cried a little bit, but I'm fine with that. I was able to talk to him for about five minutes. So, so far, those three have signed my brand new John MacArthur study Bible. I brought another one with me to have them sign, but then I saw the sale and I couldn't pass it up. Today, we're here for day two and we get to meet Jeff Williams, another bit of John MacArthur. We're doing a wretched interview. We're doing a filming of a wretched show today. I'm gonna film a little bit of that. And then other things, not to mention the great music. So I'm excited for day two. I'm excited to be here. Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't even. Anyway, great times. Let's do this thing. I remember my days in Tucson, Arizona when I had rocks for a front yard. Never had to mow because all you got is rocks. That's pretty great. It was nice to see that. Not to mention the palm trees. Palm trees are great. It's that true California feel. This is what I long for. This is what I've wanted in marriage for years and years and years and years. Now, will I ever be married again? No, but that's what I've wanted forever. Hand in hand, both having the desire to be in front of four days of solid Jesus preaching. I failed, obviously, trying to do it my way and not God's way, but it doesn't work if you're both not committed to Christ. Oh, it's frustrating, but that's what I want, and I pray and I thank God for them. What a, what a joy it is this morning to be able to introduce Jeff Williams to you. Heavens declare the glory of God. And the verb there is continuous. It's a continuous declaration, ongoing declaration. You, you can expand this to all elements of God's creation. Creation continually declares the glory of God. And the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, whose voice is not heard, whose measuring line goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. It's going to be the will of God, and I thought, he's not going to say anything I haven't heard. I ended up going because the girl I was dating at the time, who now is my wife, stuck her head in my office and said she was going down there. I said, you know, I'm coming with you. And so that's how I heard John for the first time. And he did speak his famous message on God's will is not lost. And uh, as soon as he began to speak, I was just absolutely fixated on the message because it wasn't material I heard. It wasn't just platitudes like you normally hear about the subject. But John went to scripture and he went to text after text. That's an unconventional message because he's not doing exposition on a passage. He was going from text to text to text to see, here's the thing scripture says about the will of God. And it was thoroughly biblical. He didn't use any stories or tales from his childhood or the latest popular movie 
all his illustrations were biblical. All the points he made were biblical. Well, good morning again to all of you. I have been asked to follow up on Psalm 19 by looking at the remaining portion of that Psalm. A simple-minded person is an utterly undiscerning person. You have a door on your house, right? You don't go to bed at night and leave it open. Because that door discriminates what you allow to enter into the house. You hear people say, oh, I have an open mind. Shut it, would you please? <laughs> There's nothing more stupid than having an open mind. <laughs> well, I'm an agnostic. Oh. Oh, do you know the Latin word for agnostic? Ignoramus. <laughs> I haven't heard anybody say, I am an ignoramus. <laughs> shut the door. But how do you know when to shut the door? How do you know what to keep out, what to let in? How do you know to fulfill Psalm 1, not to sit in the seat of scoffers? Not to go to some school somewhere and sit there with an open mind and let people pour lies and deception into your head. Not to go to a church where the same thing is going on. Mastering the art of living is what the word wise means. It's a Hebrew word, shakham. It's not wise sort of in the Greek sense, which again is esoteric and a little bit mystical and sort of intellectual. Wise shakam means skilled in living. So here, the word of God, the revelation of God himself is trustworthy to take an ignorant, simple-minded person without discernment and make that person skilled in holy living. God is always the source of shakam. Jeff was saying that in the last hour that uh, when you come to Job 28, he says, you can see the creation, you can see the general revelation of God, but that's not going to give you the wisdom that means you know how to live life before God. For that, you need his written word. Scripture is final judgments from God, from the heavenly bench. Here's the good news. The judgments are true. Is that not encouraging? A lot of books in the world, only this one is true. That's why the Bible ends with a warning in Revelation 22. Don't add anything to this, right? Don't take anything away. The Word of God is sufficient. So we just finished our second our first, uh, let's see, no, that was Jason, yeah. So we just finished our second session with John MacArthur, and he preached one of his most famous messages that he's ever preached, the one that is kind of, oh, it's um, requested quite a bit, and it's on, basically on the sufficiency of scripture, and it's out of Psalm 19, verse one through seven, uh, a little bit up to 10 as well. But anyway, one of the most astounding messages you'll ever hear. Uh, now I'm just kind of en route to go to grab lunch. They're bringing in Chick-fil-A and then I'm going to head over to Wretched uh, and be a part of the Wretched TV show with Todd Friel and Phil Johnson as they do a onstage interview for Wretched TV. So that's where I'm headed right now. Good times, good times. Hello and welcome to Wretched. My name is Todd Friel. I'm your host, the Wretch the song refers to, and this is, oh nuts, what is this? Phil Johnson, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen, Phil Johnson, that is so awkward. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> All right, I've got to start with a rebuke, mister. You just presented me with a gift before we began. <laughs> Tell everybody what this is. That is a Zippo lighter. What's with, with that? It's got the uh, Grace to You 50th anniversary logo on it. 
Wait, where's where's the 50th anniversary vape machine? No, 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 it's not for vaping. That's for lighting your candles. <laughs> okay. Or your barbecue. <laughs> There's scented candles, because when I think of John MacArthur, I think scented candles. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was absolutely incredible. So I got to be in there with Todd Friel and with Phil Johnson. He talked about marriage. He talked about, about family. He talked about all of these aspects as you know, Darlene and Phil Johnson have been married for 41 years and um, talked about sin, um, how to communicate all these things that define godly marriage, something I've never had before. And it is so astounding to be able to learn, to be able to take in from those that have inspired me to do it right. And I'm so thankful for that. So done with that, uh, we are fixing to head into uh, the sanctuary again after this two hour break that we've had for lunch and this wretched spot. And now we are going in to hear from Mike Riccardi. Mike Riccardi is the operations and evangelism pastor and outreach pastor for Grace Community Church and is one of the most articulate pastors you'll ever hear. And he's like half my age. <laughs> so I'm excited for Mike Riccardi. understanding that scripture doesn't give us any specific philosophy of ministry. Now it's true that scripture doesn't give us a liturgy. Scripture doesn't tell us this is the way that your order of service ought to be. But it's terribly short-sighted to suggest that scripture doesn't give us clear theological principles, the implications of which directly shape and govern our philosophy of ministry and our philosophy of evangelism. The notion that scripture is sufficient to instruct us as to what we are to proclaim, but that it's insufficient to shape how we are to proclaim it, is a concept born of a willful naivete in entrepreneurial hirelings who want to build a ministry around their own personality and personal tastes. The fact is the Bible does speak directly to this issue. There is such a thing as a biblical philosophy of ministry, and scripture is sufficient for every aspect of our evangelism. Well, <laughs> and that, my friends, was Mike Riccardi. And I tell you what, he is one of the most eloquent speakers you'll ever hear. One thing I noticed as I was sitting there listening to him the entire time he preached God's word, he preached out of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Um, but the entire time, he never said, uh, or um. We're talking the entire message. He never once said, uh, or um. He is so articulate in when he is preaching God's word and when he is speaking from the pulpit. Absolutely incredible. So, uh, to be a part of that was absolutely amazing. I'm headed now, I'm under the book tent or the lunch tent right now, but there is books a company set up over here. Zondervan, Ligonier is here, Crossway Bibles are here. So I mean like eight or nine different book companies, major book corporations, publishers are here. Yesterday I picked up my new John MacArthur Study Bible. Yeah, I know, it's like my 15th one. And then earlier I grabbed a ESV student Bible, a ESV student study Bible for my son. I've got another one at the, at the house already that's on my shelf for my daughter. But I, I, I picked that up today. I also bought the new Comfort, uh, Ray Comfort book, Faith is for Weak People. I picked up Ashamed of the Gospel yesterday. I mean, I'm coming home with like six or seven, eight new books 
to add to my collection, to add to my shelf. I am very excited. So I'm killing time right now. We're fixing to head back in there for a Q&A panel, but I'm gonna go here and check out the books and see what they got, see what else they got. You know, buy some stuff. Let's do it. Okay, okay, I'm walking away empty-handed, and that's fine. Let's, let, I, I got tomorrow as well. Nothing jumped out at me. There's plenty I want to buy, but you know how that goes. I did pick up a little brochure and a pamphlet on the Master's Seminary. You know, something to read. Can't say I didn't completely go away empty-handed, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so I'm headed now back into the sanctuary. We're doing a Q&A with Todd Friel as the moderator, and then he is going to be doing a Q&A session with, obviously, John MacArthur. He's gonna do uh, all on stage, John MacArthur, Bodhi Bauckham, and Phil Johnson. So just like it was done at the Strange Fire Conference, yeah, it's gonna so be done here. So that's what we're headed into right now. I'm looking forward to that session. Anything with Todd and John together, <laughs> I'm excited. So let's head in. This is the eternal word of God that is unchanging, that is interpreted on its face inside itself. And when you start passing it out to cultures, everything would be lost. Every different culture would come up with different kinds of intersectionality, which is categories of oppressed people. Um, every culture would come up with different theories to criticize. That's what critical theory is. It's don't accept anything. I mean, bottom line, don't accept anything, criticize everything. You know, I think for those of you who are absolutely opposed to what's in Resolution 9, I hope that by reading my original submission, you realize I'm with you guys, I'm on your side. We've got the same theology. The only difference is as I looked closely at what was produced, like some others who've done so, I don't think it's as bad. I don't think there is as much alarm necessary as has been out there. Honestly, I think we should use this to go after those who are not using these theories in subordination to Scripture. As they contradict Scripture, we've now got a green light to call them out and try to root them out of our convention. And I pray that's what will happen with this. Now, I, I, let, me, let me just note before you say anything. <laughs> this is important. You'll note in his bookshelf, he did not have a MacArthur commentary. <laughs> Maybe well, that is complete. The Q&A panel with uh, John MacArthur and Phil Johnson and what we thought was going to be Vadi Bokum, but it ended up being Mike Riccardi, is complete. Todd Friel was moderator. Of course, so many great one-liners, so many mic drops were done, <laughs> so many things said. And of course, there's never enough time in the day to be able to sit down and answer everybody's awesome. questions. But a few questions they were able to take away and to be able to ask and talk to. So that was pretty great. I know we have one more session, it's five o'clock. I'm not sure, I can't remember what it is, what's next, but anyway, that was that was absolutely wonderful. It, it was great, yes. What's one of the biggest reasons why I love Blue Garden so much in Oklahoma City? It's because of the food trucks. I am a huge fan of food trucks because of the culinary expertise that most of them are. Now these aren't like roach coaches. Food trucks are incredible and I eat at them quite often, obviously in my line of work and going to Blue Garden and going to different places in Oklahoma City. Well, Grace Community Church has brought in dozens, I mean, probably about, oh, probably almost two dozen I saw last night out here in uh, the parking lot of food trucks for us to come out and enjoy the food from. That's pretty great. And then today, even now I'm standing here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six food trucks out here uh, for everybody to come out here and be able to eat from. That's pretty great. Food truck food is absolutely amazing. I love it. Thanks, Grace Community Church, for doing that.
<laughs> Day two is adjourned. We are complete. We are done once again. Just the uh, plethora of knowledge. Here's one thing I wish. I wish I was better at taking notes. I mean, I just, I'm just terrible at taking notes. I'll spend money on Apple pencils and great note taking apps, but I'm just terrible at taking notes. I can't comprehend and my brain just doesn't work like that. But that's why I listen to like these particular sermons that are so great over and over. That's why I'll go home this weekend and wait for all the downloads to be available on Grace to Use website so I can rewatch, re-listen, rehear, and rehash everything over in my head because I just <coughs> I can't I can't um I just can't do uh, the note taking. I'm just I'm just so bad at it. Anyway, so we're done with day two. It was it was incredible. I got with uh, Todd Friel just before I left and uh, shook his hand and I said good night. Never been able to do that before. Good night, Todd. We'll see you in the morning. <laughs> it made me so happy. I stopped and talked to Jeremiah Johnson. He is Phil Johnson's son. And I needed a recommendation of a place to go eat here in the great city of LA. I told him that uh, I wanted some seafood. You know, obviously some Pacific Coast seafood would be much better than uh, good old Oklahoma seafood. Well. I said that or maybe some Mexican food. He says, well, I'm telling you right now, you're from Oklahoma and you're not gonna get much better than Ted's Cafe's Candido. And I said, okay, I, I gotcha. You know, I love Ted's, don't get me wrong. There's a couple of other places that I like more, but Ted's is good. Where's my car? Is that my car? Um, so anyway, he told me to go. We hashed out a couple of places, but we ended up picking a spot, uh, a food truck actually. He says, food trucks are great, and I, and I agree. Food trucks are wonderful, but there's just one specific food truck that you need to go try. So that's where I'm going. It's in North Hollywood, and I've never been to North Hollywood, but it's only 20 minutes from here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna head that way, and uh, we'll talk more about it. I'm a mess Don't know how I got here But I'm blessed Hello Okay, so here's my dilemma I'm here from Oklahoma City And I was told to come here to eat Like, this is like the place And I never, I mean, I don't know I've never been to LA, I've never been here ever I've never been to where I'm going And I'm just here to eat dinner So, I don't want spicy I'll, I want short rib Let's do a taco short rib And let's do a chicken Because I want to try the chicken And I guess I wanted a burrito too But I don't like spicy uh, Short rib, but not the spicy Or chicken, spicy pork A little spicy North Hollywood? Yeah Never never. Okay. I've placed my order. Kogi food truck for Kogi barbecue. It's like a Japanese twist of a Mexican style Latina type of barbecue. Not sure what that's about. But it's supposed to be pretty great. It's supposed to be pretty great. It seems to be North Hollywood Park because there's different thing, other things happening here too. So I found a spot to eat. So in front of me is a, looks like a, a cricket game. I haven't seen cricket in years. No, but it looks like it's just soccer. It's just soccer. Didn't know it take me past my destiny. You're behind me with the rest. Cause I'm a mess. No more. Spicy. I'm not a big fan of spicy. And I go home. Mm. Spicy. The chicken was much less spicy. I'm debating on eating this. It's quite big. I gotta at least try it. 
big as Chipotle. That is as big as Chipotle. That's legit right there. Okay, burrito's good. I don't want to have any regrets on this trip, and I don't so far. Ooh, that's a dirty lens. Oh, much better. Okay, so no regrets so far. This taco truck, Kigo Barbecue, it's currently here in Hollywood, California. I guess they have several trucks, but this one, recommendation, was superb, and I'm so glad. Look at this whole row of trucks. Sad things could only get better. I need it more than ever. They go, go. How can I believe you when everything is secret, secret? Okay, so we've established this is a pretty great spot. I love it. So, now I'm gonna go back to my car because I, mean, I parked in an okay zone, but I don't wanna take a chance. <laughs> I don't need my car towed, not knowing a thing. So anyway, let's, let's get over there. Woo! I don't know if you can see all those houses back there or businesses or whatever, but it's all on the side of a mountain. Right. In one mile, Hill. take the exit to merge on I don't know. five north towards Sacramento. I came off this one part and all of a sudden it was just a I was looking down into a canyon or something of all the lights and it was so pretty to see. So the traffic never dies in Los Angeles. I've been at the exit off of the California 170 onto the 405 northbound. I've been on that entrance, exit entrance. I'm trying to get onto 405 north. And I've been in this uh, line of people trying to get onto it for 10 minutes. Same thing about a wreck being up here. So it's just traffic. I mean, that's just the way traffic is. I'm telling you, this 405 freeway was the one thing that I was worried about. I mean, I can do traffic, I can drive, I do it for a lot. And so I'm not worried about that, but it's, it's, it's the fact that I'm sitting, I'm not driving, I'm sitting. <laughs> I'm sitting in traffic. Actually, I am traffic. My whole perspective changed once I realized I was part of the problem. Like you're not in traffic, you are traffic. You're a part of the problem. And so anyway, that's that. So you know, be patient. I've got great music playing and uh, I'm just sitting here trying to let people in, trying to be the nice guy, trying to get back to my hotel because I'm very tired, I'm very full. Woo, mercy. You see through, gotta make space for the new you Like I'm old news in your review mirror Can I go this way? No, no, you no go here No go here No, you leave, not now You know see sunrise? You know, no see sunrise here No see sunrise <laughs> 